What's up guys, I'm Jason, this is the Freebird Garage, and today we are doing a stator on a 1992 Harley Davidson FXR that's owned by Grant. My neighbor, he's been on the channel a bunch of times with his FXR, and finally, unfortunately, the time has come, and his bike has been having some real difficult issues, staying charged, and also dying when he's been driving. So, I've been waiting to pull this one together, because I was just waiting for the right timing, and this is perfect for a how-to, I've done this plenty of times, so it's a pretty good process. Never done it before, I'm excited to get this one done, so let's get at it. All right, so I'm having Grant do the whole work himself. So first part, we're gonna start ripping off the drain plug now, then work to our peg, and then work to our shifter, outer primary, and we should be able to get to the inside. So let Grant get to it. Removing the shifter and we got the bolt, the tension bolt here removed, but it never wants to just come off easily. Well, actually, I'm sorry, that one does now, but hold on, is that gonna come off? Nope. All right, so it never really wants to come off easy. So what we're gonna do is a little trick that I have is with this rubber mallet, is a little bit of a tension on the lever and then just tap right off there. Just like that. Just gonna tap with a rubber mallet there, just kind of break the seal. You just gotta work around. There we go, beautiful. Everything's looking pretty clean, no damaging going on here. In the service manual, and most of others, they want you to remove both the clutch basket and the compensator nut. And I can actually get it removed by just doing the nut here, pulling that apart. This loosened up should give you enough space and that will get us right to our stator. We gotta use a breaker bar to break off the tension on it, and we're gonna use a stopper, easily picked up from anywhere online for pretty cheap, or you can use a bunch of t-shirts, piece of wood, metal, but we're gonna use this proper way of what the manual tells us. So he's gonna slide that up into the gear set and chain right now. It's gonna lock it in place, okay? And then we're gonna reposition now that it's locked in here, we're gonna reposition the breaker bar so he's got a nice angle towards it. We may have to remove the highway peg so he's got more to push down, but we got enough there. Probably gonna want a little bit different angle. Yeah, let's do a different angle. There you go. So, go down and see if you do it that way. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yep, try to do it that way. See if he's got enough there. Nope. All right, if this doesn't work, this is the proper way to do it by the service manual. There's a trick that I do if this doesn't work, which we may be leaning into that. It's gonna take either two of us. Let's see if we can get this off. All right, to be on the safe side, I lowered the bike down so we can get enough tension to be able to break it loose so we can do a full push down without rocking the whole bike on the lift. So that's what we're gonna do now, get this broke apart. Parker. We're just gonna loosen now up the chain tensioner here, drop it down, don't fully pull it off. Now we're gonna pull this off and squeeze it just enough to come off the chain there. Pull it straight off, the, straight out of there. You can kind of leave but boom, boom. Look at that, still everything on the clutch basket in contact, just gotta have the chain tensioner well loosened up, not fully removed. You can get that compensator nut right off. We wanna remember where our shims are at, so we're gonna pull off the first ones here. We're gonna have Grant yank those off. Just remember our same assembly there. And then he's clear, no more behind there. All right, now we're gonna need two Allen keys, yep. And you're gonna put them in each holes like hooks and pull back. 
You're gonna feel like a, a loosen and then a tug. There we go. There we are. Beautiful, all right. We are in the stator now. We gotta remove the four Allen head bolts that are inside. The hub looks good. All the magnets are together. Nothing's cracked, so that's a real good sign and not severely worn. Usually you would replace these if these have fallen apart, cracked, or some pieces are floating around, but looks good there. We're gonna clean that up. And we're gonna pull apart the stator now and get it out. Four steer bolts are removed. Now go back to the tricky ones. They're right here and here. Get yourself pretty caught up in trying to remove this thing if that bracket's not removed. So we are good to go and Grant's gonna get those two off. All right, all the bolts are gone. We're gonna remove the plug. See what it looks like. Bingo, unfortunately the voltage regulator looks to be toast as well. Let's check out the plug on the inside of the stator. We want to assume that that's gone as well. Oh yeah. Yep, both sides torched. All right, well, we we're fixing definitely the first problem, but we're gonna replace that in another video, the voltage regulator. I actually already have, never seen it before. Go check it out if you're doing the same thing. All right, in order to remove the stator after everything's been pulling apart, we gotta push the plug through and work the stator at the same time and it will just pop out after there. You want me to pull on Yep, this? keep pulling, you're good. You're not, you're, it's all new that's coming. Holy shit. That plug was so bad it just yanked right out, destroyed here. All right, before we get in installing the stator, here's the old one with the wires pull out of the plugs. Here's a new one by Cycle Electric. Not sponsored by them at all, but they make a fantastic replacement. They make a improvement over the old one. The plug has nice suction areas to make sure that it's a solid seal when going back to the casing. And as you can tell, I mean, generally, obviously, it's not been soaked in oil, so it looks brand new. Gauge of the wire here is much thicker and improved from the old ones there. The other shoes, much thicker on the new one. These ones being, of course, worn down after time, so it was definitely time for a, a new one. But highly recommend Psychoelectric if you're looking into getting a new stator. And they're uh, made in America, Ohio, I believe, to be exact. This part's going to be all down to the torque specs and everything that it includes with the service manual and what Psychoelectric wants us to do. So the first part is getting the stator situated we're gonna put a nice bead of RTV silicone and we're gonna get it so that each of those rings on that stator plug are nice and filled and have a solid bead to make sure there's no oil gonna come out of there. Just take your finger, kind of move it all the way around. Yep, just like that. Perfect, nice and get make sure it's in all the grooves there. Bead is good, now we're gonna fish Wire right up into the casing. Oh, I see it. Yep. It'll start to smooth out. Switch to a pair of channel locks just to get around the thick wire to help push. So you kind of pry and push against the wire in the casing, not damaging the wire. You got it. It's almost there. A little bit more. Yep. There you go. You almost got it. You got it. You got it. All right, stator's in place, silicone looks good. Now we're gonna install the part that many people forget about right there. And it's gonna lock the stator wire in place. If you don't do that, you're gonna have a bad day of the stator coming loose. So he's gonna put that in, no torque spec on those. Just straightforward, just nice hand strength tightened down. All right, stator bolts going in, the four of them. Hand tight as always first, and then we're gonna torque them down to spec. All right, Cycle Electric's torque specs are 30 to 40 inch pounds. We're gonna find that first click on the 30s going around. Now, 40 inch pounds. Beautiful. All right, stator's locked down. Now we gotta throw the shims on and keep rolling. There we go. There we go. 
the man who snaps, watch your fingers, that's all. Once you align, they'll drag it right in. Bam. Now we're doing the outer shims. Now we're going to put the compensator nut on. Before we put this on, this is where we're going to finagle the chain and the compensator nut together. So we're going to have to actually get this on the chain first. Right. This is where it becomes a little fun. There we go. We just got it. All right, we're putting the final lock nut on here for the compensator. And uh, Grant, do you know who loves Loctite, Red Loctite in particular? It was Jesus, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Jesus loves Loctite. Make sure you put a knot on there. Oh yeah. A little bit more? Mm-hmm. Very important, especially on this nut. Otherwise, if it comes loose, you're gonna detonate your inside of your primary. You want this nut coated. You just put a dab, I've seen it happen, and it just will come back apart and not have a good day on yourself on the road so completely coated in the inside it's got a hand tighten it on there and then we're gonna get the nice big bar on here and get it torqued down to spec so let's get rolling torquing down the compensator nut now we got our black all ready to rock in there First spot is gonna be 150 foot-pounds and then 165. All right, and 165. All right, so we're gonna check for the primary chain tensioner after it's been tightened down. Cold, it needs to be between 5 8 to 7 8 So we're gonna use the wrenches as a quick guidance to where we're gonna be at. We go right here and above the 5 8 line. and not quite the 7 8 so right in between, that's why I like. Too tight, you're gonna have a better chance of prematurely wearing out your chain and the insides. Too loose, it's gonna be more noisy, so we're going in between, looks good. All right, we're gonna throw on the primary cover gasket. Make sure everything aligns, looks like it does, awesome. Doing some Loctite. Didn't have blue, so we're just using a little bit of red to be able to torque these down. And remember, the four shorts, or five short bolts and four long bolts on this cover. And the shorties go up to the front. The back end will be all of the long ends. Put in the drain plug before we torque everything down. I have to do a Teflon like three to four times. It's good to go in. All right, first seven foot pounds on each cover casing bolt. Now nine foot pounds of torque. All right, we gotta fill up to the primary, so you gotta get up to that silver line just touching there with the primary fluid or by the service manual. It says 38 to 44 ounces of primary fluid. All right, just covering the line there. We are torqued down, filled up. It is three o'clock in the fucking morning right now, and it has been four hours to get this job done. We are pumped. Hope this helped you out. You should go do it yourself now with all the how-to in this video. So, if you have made it all the way through, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button, tap that like, press the notification, leave a comment below, tell me what you think. And for those that have already subscribed, thank you. And as always, stay free. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.